please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Day like this, uh, it's the index which should be the mover and the shaker since it's uh, old time highs for the Nifty Bank, old time highs for the Nifty. But within them, of course, there are some stocks which are supporting the index. And for our movers and shakers uh, segment, uh, let us start uh, with uh, Ekta. Devise is the one that's not participating. Why? Well, yes, absolutely. Now, it is uh, public knowledge that the Unit 2 inspection, which has had an import alert all the way back since March of 2017 and is around 60 to 65 percent of their U.S. sales, is getting re-inspected by the U.S. FDA. Remember that this particular inspection started on the 11th of September and uh, the general number of days for this particular audit is around 10 odd days. So, I do understand from my sources that despite Friday being quite a, uh, you know, a, a was considered to probably be the finality of the inspection because it has a certain number of days it's probably going to go into today and tomorrow as well and hence we can hear the closure report the number of observations possibly by tonight or by tomorrow end of day now uh, remember this is an important plant and hence uh, this is a complete good manufacturing practice reinspection which is currently taking place it's not a product specific inspection so all eyes are going to be on number of observations whether there are any sort of repeat observations and whether eventually the import alert is going to be lifted. A lot of rumors floating around the market about uh, the number of observations, etc. So the street, uh, the street is probably taking a bit of a cautious view ahead of it. A lot of people stay up night for Manchester United or for Rafa Nadal Ekta or for Ekta. Ekta. <laughs> Ekta will stay up for what is there on observations, <laughs> what is on the USFDA website. Good luck to yes. her. <laughs> good for us. Oh, yeah, good for us for sure. All right, uh, with that, let's just focus to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive news break here coming in from Deal Street. Negotiations are in the final stages for the sale of the controlling stake in a telecom tower giant. This new company is said to be created by merging Bharti Infratel and Indus Towers. Remember, while Bharti Airtel is the promoter of Bharti Infratel, Indus Towers has been promoted under a joint venture between Bharti Airtel, Vodafone and Idea. Nisha Podar here with all the details. Nisha, what are you picking up? It's a large transaction in the telecom tower space and we do gather from sources with direct knowledge and several of them whom I spoke to, they have confirmed that uh, the talks are in advanced stages. In fact, several parties involved here, KKR, CPPI, B, Bharti, Airtel, Bharti, Infratel, along with Idea and Vodafone who own stake in, in this tower are all in hectic negotiations at this time and uh, they are more than ever before serious about this transaction going through also is what I gather. Now, in this final lap of, um, uh, remember, uh, the, the deal uh, uh, talks that are going on, the two key drivers that everybody is talking about is valuation as well as the structure of the deal. Because it is a complicated mega deal where um, Bharti Infratel and Indus Tower both combined would be bought over by KKR, CPPB, CPPIB and they would hold a majority stake. But remember, IDEA and Vodafone also have substantial stake in Indus Tower and now we do gather as part of the structuring, they do not want to cede their uh, entire interest in these tower assets. They want to hold on to the minority stake. So the new structure could look like Bharti, Airtel, IDEA as well as Vodafone holding on to minority stake in Bharti Infratel Indus combined and KKR CPPIB be the majority controlling owner of this large asset. So that's the latest that I'm gathering on this large complicated uh, deal structure and it is in the final stages is what sources with direct knowledge share with us. All right, Nishar, towering deal and which way will it lean is what we have to find out. Uh, Ekta, back to you. Now you're watching Dr. Reddy's. Yes, absolutely. Now, the news on Dr. Reddy's is that uh, its API plant in UK doesn't contribute that much in terms of sales, got reinspected by the US FDA and was issued three observations. Now, obviously, because of the lack of uh, knowledge about what the three observations are, there is that uncertainty which is prevailing and hence the Dr. Reddy stock is down. But nonetheless, I did uh, have a word with a couple of sources and they did mention that uh, this entire contribution from this plant is anyway not that much. 
All right, and the big stock that will be in focus through the week is Tata Motors ahead of the launch of Nexon this week. Uh, Naveen brokerages already turning, um, uh, you know, bullish on this launch. So today it's Bank of America Merrill Lynch. They maintained a buy on the stock, and the target price is 515. Remember, there's a 25 ups, uh, percent upside if you see the at the target price. As you pointed out, yeah, why is it important? Because we are expecting a launch of Tata Nexon on Thursday. The price is touted to be anywhere around 8 lakhs as per reports. And that will be uh, putting Tata Nexon clearly against uh, the Ford Expo, uh, Ex Eco Sport or maybe a Maruti Brezza. Also remember one thing, new launches in the JLR segment. That is where the key driver for the company will be. That is where Bofa ML believes that uh, will be driving the key growth going ahead. Also remember in Q1 FY18, the biggest cut in the margins was seen due to the rupee ap uh, appreciation and the pound appreciation on the other hand. So now they believe that the company is purely properly hedged uh, for the whole of H2 FY18. So in that way, it will be cushioned when it comes to currency appreciation. Also, production ramp up, that will aid the overall volumes for the company according to Bofamel and that is the reason why they are sanguine on the stock. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Naveen. Uh, of course, people are waiting either to buy Tarmota <laughs> stock or the Nexon. Well, uh, uh, let's get to Ritu. Ritu, uh, monitor spot, I think the ad is out, right, are seeking buyers? Absolutely. The insolvency resolution professional on Saturday actually put out an ad in newspapers publicly inviting expression of interest or bid to submit a resolution plan for the turnaround of the company. By this, what they're actually asking for is bid to buy majority stake is, is uh, what the committee of creditors as well as the IRP had agreed upon. Uh, remember, we're talking about a 12,000 crore debt where in the past for monetary part. Uh, lenders had received bids from the likes of JS Double Steel, uh, but for some reason the ministry had requested or advised them to go ahead and uh, ask sale to take over operations for the time being, which again did not work out. And there have been two to three rounds of bids uh, unsuccessfully in the past, but this is now the IRP inviting bid. Perhaps, uh, you know, we also understand from lenders that. Uh, this time around as well, informally, quite a few private equity players like KKR, for instance, have shown interest. And therefore, they are hopeful of some resolution this time around. But the process has started. 25th September is the date to watch out for because that is the last day for uh, submitting their bids, after which the lenders will take a call, depending on the kind of haircuts that are asked, on who the final uh, buyer could be. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Ritu. We will expect you to keep us uh, informed of uh, the bidding process as well. All right, and also, you know, a lot of these carbon and graphite uh, companies have been doing well. HEG, in fact, spoke with us uh, this morning. That company has had a dream run. The stock is up about 350% in the last one year. We caught up with Raju Rastogi, the CFO and COO, and he says that they expect a 40% increase in sales in FY18, and they should probably be reporting a profit this year. The price increase has been has been since January of this year, and it was so fast. It happened so fast, primarily due to shortage of uh, electrodes in China, and also steel stoppage of steel making in China. That you know, some of the players are able to end cash on the price increase immediately. But we, as a long-term player, we generally book our orders at least a year in advance. And this is how the graphite industry has been working. I would safely say we will be higher by at least 40% over last year. In terms of percentages, it would be much healthier as compared to last year is what I can say. We definitely will turn around the HEG Limited in 17, 18 years. All right, quickly, let's recap the buzzing stocks. Divi's Labs, Bharti, Infratel, Dr. Reddy's, Monet Spart, Tata Motors, and HEG. Well, this is a CNBC TV exclusive. We are learning from sources that the railways are reviewing General Electric's Marhaura diesel locomotive factory. Ashpreet Sethi, our colleague from Delhi, has uh, got some exclusive details for us. Tell us, Ashpreet. Yes, a review meeting was held uh, last week uh, with uh, Piyush Goyal, the um, railway minister who's just taken over, where the railway board members, including the chairman Ashwini Lohani, has raised issues as to how 
a diesel locomotive factory might not be required because remember uh, railways have been shifting to the whole electrification process they aim to complete it and make it a near electrified uh, railway network so the discussion was on the lines of how ge's uh, factory might be affected the most uh, in fact they also gone ahead and said that another meeting will be held so to tell us that ge will be included and they will be looking as to how the exit clause can be worked out in fact ashni lohani gave a statement to us saying that all options will need to be examined in depth before a final decision is taken because no final decision has been taken as of now in this review meeting a host of uh, uh, projects were reviewed including alstom's electric project which was given in bihar itself remember these two projects hold importance as far as the whole fdi uh, scene is concerned because remember it brings in about 40000 odd crores both projects combined and they were supposed to build 1000 diesel locomotives and 800 electric units over 11 years however ge has told us in a statement that they are actively fulfilling the contract with indian railways and they are on their way they've already built two lo- locomotives and one will reach india on october 10th we'll get you more updates because we will be picking up some more details from sources as to what will be the agenda of the next meeting back to you Okay thanks a lot for the rashpreet but uh, if you can just add a word more on how do you think this will progress do you think the current order given to alstom continues or is that also in jeopardy from what you are picking up Well, uh, as of now, what uh, sources tell us, and even Lohani has indicated, is that the Alstom project will not be touched as of now. It was only under review as to whether it is on track as far as getting the 800 electric units on board is concerned or not. Because remember, this is the electric plant. Right now, the uh, railways is only focusing on uh, ways in which or options in which the diesel locomotive uh, factory can be wound up. Because remember, this is the electrification process that they are looking at. Back to you. All right, we'll uh, trust you to keep us posted about uh, the developments in this meeting as well.